Hey everybody, this is Nick Siak with Bloodline Sports, co-founder. We're here uh, outside the box. I'm here with my partners, TJ Wilcox and out of Arizona. How are you doing, Hello. TJ? And Alex Vicario, another partner Hello. of Bloodline Sports. How are you doing, Alex? Doing well, thank you, Nick. Great. Hey, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be doing some uh, player focuses. We're going to start off with uh, Hunter Moringa uh, out of Valley Christian High School in uh, Tempe, Arizona. And uh, TJ, you want to give us a little uh, background on Hunter? Would love to. Yeah, he, uh, I have the luxury of coaching him with the Scottsdale Dirtbags. Um, there's a picture of him right here on the screen. He was, um, I believe he was first team all section, right, Nick? Is that correct? Uh, he was honorable mention. Honorable mention? Yes. Okay. Well, he should have been first team. Um, he's just, he's one of those, every now and then you get, just about every team you coach, you get like this, what I call a silent assassin. He's just a quiet kid that just, just goes about his work. Um, you know, just, you know, keeps his head down. He's got unbelievable mound presence. He, uh, He's pretty much, and I, and he knows this. He's going to be a PO in in college, um, but he was quarterback of the varsity football team. He actually this year hit four twenty nine, led his team in doubles, and had a five oh seven on base percentage, which trailed the leader by five oh eight. So um, he had a two point one zero ERA. 40 innings with 54 strikeouts and did not give up one extra base hit all season. They lost in the state championship game. Right. Just uh, what, you know, a week ago. Um, but he's just, a, he's a good dude. He's, he's 6'2", 170. He's, he's going to fill out just a very athletic kid, very unassuming, um, you know, works hard, always shows up. He's always on time with the clean uniform on. It's just a, it's a joy to, to be, be his coach. Uh, it, it's, it's, he's a great kid from a great family. And uh, right now he's, his dream is Arizona state or grand Canyon. And with his skill set, I don't see how it can't happen. Um, especially if he puts another 20 pounds on. Um, it's crazy how in the collegiate world, there's a term now called jar. And the coaches say that, oh, is, oh, is he a jar? And a jar means just another righty. And because <laughs> there's a lot of just another righties out there, but he's, he's different. He knows how to pitch. Um, you know he's got the velo, he's got a great curveball, but it's the 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 instincts of getting feedback from the the hitters' swings and their approach at the plate. He he adjusts between pitches, and uh, you know he's he's just he's got that kind of it factor with without being real having a flair about it, and I think that's cool because sometimes you want to get a kid to get a little bit more animated, look, get him a little bit more excited with Hunter. You don't need it. He's just going to show up. He throws strikes. You, you never have to worry that he's going to have a bad game. He's uh, calm and cool and collected. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to having a real good season with him this summer and uh, you know, have, he'll have his senior year ahead of him next year. And hopefully we'll uh, be able to get him, on the radar with some of these schools that he wants to go to, <clears throat> you know, watching him and seeing his videos and you can tell he's got an athletic build, you know, mm -hmm. from his shoulders down to his, his waist. So he definitely has room to grow. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I would say playing quarterback gives him, you know, that athleticism is, is apparent and arm strength and footwork and all that. So I think that uh, that's a good sign. Well, not to mention the cerebral part of it. Mm -hmm. when you, play, you play quarterback, you're having to, read all the, the defenses and think about, you know, if you're, if you're going to call an audible or whatever. And I, I think that's what helps him when he's pitching is again, like I, I go back to like Greg Maddox 
probably my favorite pitcher of all time is he he just had this way of being able to look at a, a, a his opponent's swing and being able to adjust to like okay i i just burnt him on that pitch i can set him up here i can throw it again you know so it's it's the the whole mental part of it and you know i think the mental part of baseball isn't taught enough nearly enough and with uh, with hunter the way he is it like you don't have to even teach it he just he has it so like i said he's got that it factor and he's um he's he's gonna do well in the future and and uh he's got a bright future whether it's you know after baseball or whatever but comes from a great family and he's a great teammate and and uh you know proud to be his coach he, where, where will he be playing this summer? Uh, he'll be playing with us, uh, the Scottsdale Dirtbags, on the 23s. We are currently ranked fourth in the region, which is California, Nevada, Scotts, or, uh, New Mexico, um, Arizona, and Colorado. Okay. And we should be – I'm hoping we get ranked a little higher, but um, – yeah, we were 22 and five last session and we got everybody coming back. So got a really impressive, challenging schedule coming up. Um, USA's perfect games, Irvine. So yeah, we're excited. We're gonna bring some dudes out and compete and see if we can take them down. <clears throat> right, well, I'm excited to see what he does this summer and you know, his, his senior year as well. So it's, it's gonna be exciting to see. Yeah, you know, he's a little bit of a big fish in a small pond for being, you know, I mean, he could he could be a number one dude at, you know, Hamilton or, um, you know, Mountain View or Desert Ridge. I mean, some of these other bigger schools, but, you know, he's, he's at a 3A small Christian school, but which, you know, I think that kind of is what makes him a little bit more humble and, and how he goes about his way, but he could, he could definitely pitch at, at just about any school in, in the state of Arizona, which says a lot because, you know, we're a baseball state. So, but uh, yeah, we're real excited to see his growth and uh, you know, hopefully we can watch him on TV in a couple of years and at a, at a major college and, you know, like he's just going to make, like we always say, he's going to make the dugout better. He's going to make the campus better make the locker room better. He's just one of those guys. Just one of those guys you want on the team. So real excited. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yep. All right, we're going to move on to the next player focus, and we're going to be focusing on Justin Nock uh, out of Orange High School. Right now he's in the transfer portal. And uh, Alex, you want to give us a little background on Justin? Yeah, let me throw that up there. All right. Um, so Justin Nock catcher out of Orange, California. I've had the pleasure of coaching Justin. Um, I coached him in high school. So I know the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, I can tell you in high school, he was a stud, um, not only on the field, but he's one of those guys that's a leader, um, which is, I would say, necessary in a catcher, but in the dugout as well. He's not afraid to tell guys where they should have been or what they should have done. And that's kind of a dicey thing to do because that means you always need to do the right thing, or at least most of the time. And he's one of those guys that he'll wear a pitch. He's, he loves blocking. Um, he throws the ball well. His after high school story um, is a little messy, but it's not indicative of the kid he is. He went to a junior college and redshirted. Um, out of there, he got an offer to play at Waldorf University in Iowa. Although he did pretty well in the baseball field, I think he struggled with the transition. Um, California your whole life and moved to Iowa. And he was practicing in the snow and away from his family. I'll tell you, he's got a great family, um, great extended family. I know them all. They support the program. They come out and root for him and they watch him play. And they're not helicopter families, but you can talk to them. They, they know baseball. And I think that was kind of a blessing and a curse because – they're great to be around, but I think he missed them when he was in Iowa. Um, he got a little homesick and he struggled in the classroom. He had good grades at Orange, but struggled. And I think it was the whole environment thing. 
leaving home, being out of the middle of nowhere, not knowing a whole lot of people. Um, so again, that situation, I know it doesn't always look good, two schools in two years and all that and looking for a new one. But again, I don't think that's indicative of who he is. He's a hard worker, um, ran into some trouble, like I said, being homesick and not getting the grades. He took some time off and he gave me a call and he said, coach, I, I uh, know what I'm missing is baseball. I'm, let, let's let's do this. I'm ready. So he's ready to recommit himself. He said he's going to do whatever it takes to play ball and get the grades. He wants to graduate, obviously. Um, a little bit of what he did and keep this in mind. He did this on the field when he was struggling as a freshman at Waldorf University. He was second team all conference as a freshman and he won a gold glove in the, in the conference. Um, so he threw out 13 of 25 attempted base runners, which obviously is over five, uh, 50 percent. Uh, his pop time is around one nine two tops, um, five eight one eighty. Um, we always made fun of him because in high school he always hit balls off the wall, and we said he couldn't get one out. Uh, he hit five home runs at Waldorf, so he he, he found a little power. Um, another thing, he works out every weekend. He's always in the weight room, so he wants to do whatever he needs to do to make it work this time. He knows uh, chances are running out. And he's uh he's he's ready to make it work. So that's just a knock, and uh, he's looking for a place to play. I think he'd like to stay in California. Um, I don't know. It doesn't need to be commuting from home and all that, but I think he'd like to not go so far away this time. It's just that it's it's hard when you're you have that environment, and then you're just thrown. You feel like you're thrown into the middle of nothing. Yeah. And you you got nobody to call, nobody to to hug nobody to put their arm around your shoulder and it, it's it's tough you know when you're when you're 18 19 years old so but you know i i know i've met him i think twice uh you know obviously a great family comes from a great family great kid and um you know if we can get him in the right environment that that'll be huge because he, he can definitely play baseball well i'll tell you a quick little story that tells you what kind of kid he is I took him out to lunch to kind of talk about his future and we, we left the restaurant and I came home and five minutes later, there's a knock on my door and it was him. I said, what's going on? He said, Oh, I forgot to thank you. I said, I said, dude, you could have just texted me or something. He's like, no, it's like, I want to come by and thank you. So yeah, he, he, he was raised right and, he, and he's ready to, to do what it takes to uh, be successful here. So awesome. Yes. It's always about refocusing. It's always second chances. So yep. fantastic. Sweet. Well, those are our two dudes for the week, and we hope you enjoyed it. And we'll uh, we'll get it out on our uh, social media, which we have. Go ahead, Nick. Our our social media. We platforms. have Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Please give us a follow, Alex TJ. Thank you very much for your time. That was awesome. We'll be back next week on another episode of Bloodline Sports Outside the Box.